Food Heals Podcast, episode 49. Do people ask you the question that I always get, which is, where do you get your protein and how do you respond? I ask them, where do they get their saturated fat? (laughs) (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. Today's guest is Dr. Joel Kahn. Dr. Khan is a cardiologist whose personal mission is to prevent 1 million heart attacks over the next two years. His brand of cardiology combines the best of Western and complementary therapies for total healing. Dr. Khan is known as America's Holistic Heart Doc and graduated summa cum laude from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Dr. Khan has been practicing invasive, interventional, and preventative cardiology in Detroit since 1990. But before we get to our interview with Dr. Khan, we have to tell you about today's sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Market. Are you trying to live a more healthy life but find organic and non-toxic products too expensive or hard to find? Then ThriveMarket.com is the online shopping club for you. Like the Costco meets Whole Foods for everything healthy online, you'll get the best brands and groceries up to 50 percent off retail prices that's right i'm telling you because it happened to me i got 50 percent off and it is all shipped nationally to your door for free they even have the best non-toxic household products beauty pet and baby products in the market yep they have dog toys and treats natural deodorants vitamins lotion diapers, nail polish, even makeup. (laughs) And they have great gift ideas too, and holiday recipes. Hopefully you've gotten all your gifts by now, but if you haven't, check out Thrive. (laughs) But what I love most about Thrive is their charitable cause, because for every paid membership, thrivemarket.com donates a free membership to a low-income family, a teacher, or a military family. I mean, Susie, that's amazing. That's incredible. That's the way that the world should be. I know. I love working with businesses that really practice what they preach and really believe in giving back to the community. Yeah, they're walking the walk. Yeah. This is a game changer, Food Heals Nation, because you never have to pay full price for healthy food again. That's why we scored an exclusive discount for you. Yes. So check out thrivemarket.com and get three months free membership plus 15% off your first order. And I just want to say in previous episodes, Food Heals Nation, we told you you get two months free, but I was wrong. You get three months free. So thank you, Thrive Market, for giving us three months free. Very generous. I know. Join the movement at thrivemarket.com slash food heals. And don't forget, we have two special promotions going on right now for you, Food Heals Nation. That's right. We have our holiday gift bag giveaway with organic products from No Tox Life and the Global Healing Center. And we have two amazing books, Gorgeous for Good by Sophie Uliano and Will Travel for Vegan Food by Kristen Lajeunesse. And we just added Natural Calm Anti-Stress Raspberry Lemon Dietary Supplement Drink by Natural Vitality. Yes, and it works, by the way, because I've used it. It's really good. It helps you relax. And it's delicious. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, there's so, like, things are changing, but sometimes you encounter supplements that don't taste quite so good. This stuff is delicious. It's delicious and it works. I just can't get enough of it. That's right. You're getting your magnesium. Yeah. If you don't get it any other way, at least you can get it with calm at night before you go to bed. And also we have added two books by Ann Baroque who healed herself of multiple sclerosis. And please go back to episode 47 if you want to hear how she did it. But yeah. she's amazing. <laughs> Ann is incredible. I've actually, I knew her from years ago. She's a friend. I was a patient of hers about 10 years ago. Yeah. Her books are called The Candida Cure and Healing Multiple Sclerosis. And we are so excited to have them in our holiday gift bag. Yep. So to enter to win, all you have to do is subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. Screenshot your review and post it to our Facebook wall, tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation, or email it to us at info at foodhealsnation.com. And if you entered our last contest but you didn't win, you're still eligible for a holiday gift bag. If you reviewed us on iTunes last time, for example, you can just review us on Stitcher at this time and you will be automatically entered to win. And of course, our second promotion is our brand new ebook, The Vitality Cleanse. 
That's right. We want to help our Food Heals Nation start the new year off right. So from now until January 5th, 2016, you can get the Vitality Cleanse, which includes your cleansing guide, your schedule, and your shopping list for half off the regular price. So instead of $26, you'll only pay $13 using the coupon code FOODHEALS. Do you want to lose weight, feel more energetic, and more focused in the new year? Uh, Yeah, who doesn't? So in the book, we'll teach you the exact five-day cleanse that we do two to three times a year to keep our bodies healthy. You'll receive a shopping list and schedule so you know exactly what to do to get the results you want. And I just want to point out that I've done this cleanse so many times. It is modeled after all the cleanses that we have done between San Diego, Palm Springs, Florida, and Europe. We put together the best of the best and made it something that you can do at home with an exact schedule, exact supplements to take, exact exact juices to make. It's it's amazing, Food Heals Nation. We know you're going to love it. So go to foodhealscleanse.com and get your copy today. Next up, our interview with Dr. Khan. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Our guest today is Dr. Joel Kahn. Over the past 25 years, Dr. Kahn has improved the lives and vitality of thousands of his patients, taking many of them from chronic health to vibrant living. His devotion to patient care has earned him top honors, and he has been nominated as a top doctor in cardiology for many years straight. His passion for education and prevention is recognized by his patients and peer doctors alike. Reader's Digest magazine selected Dr. Khan for their Holistic Heart Doc column. Welcome, Dr. Khan. How are you today? I'm excited to be on your show, and I'm feeling pretty darn rosy. That's awesome. We are so glad to have you. We love having doctors that preach a holistic lifestyle. So tell us, what does a 30-year plant-based cardiologist do day to day? Um, Act like he's 15 because they feel so young from all that freedom from toxicity and high antioxidant and phytonutrient levels. But what do I do today? today? <laughs> I have a very active cardiology practice that has evolved to focus solely on prevention and reversal of heart disease using a variety of standard and holistic integrative strategies to reverse heart disease. I write a lot, blog a lot, and then I just opened a very large plant-based restaurant in suburban Detroit, which I'm standing in right now. And it is a passionate project with uh, wife and son, and uh, it's taken a lot of my time too. So I'm glad I'm plant-powered. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the energy to do all this stuff. Wow. Well, I've never had anyone say they felt like they were 15, so that's quite a feat. (laughs) Everybody says I'm 15. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) So what's your restaurant called? Green Space Cafe and artisanal plant-based restaurant. I think it says in the door, but nice. it's a pretty, it seats about 150 full bar, organic, non-GMO, plant-based, no animal cruelty, a hymns of baby were for the people. It's a city called Ferndale, Michigan that is adjacent to Detroit, Michigan and pretty amazing large place. So we just been open a week. It's been insanely popular. I hope we say that when you Call me in a year, five, and ten years, too. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to have to come visit next time I'm in the area. And Please. And you said it was, I think I read this, it's the largest organic plant-based restaurant in the Midwest. That I'm quite sure of. You know, I don't want to go head-to-head with anybody around the country. I'm not sure. And I'd actually like to say it's one of the top 50 because there were so many. They're popping up everywhere. But I tell you, in our first week, I've had phone calls all over the country. Can That's you awesome. come to Atlanta and put one of yours? restaurants and it's been open four days my favorite phone call was from john Mackey, ceo of whole foods for the world yeah. can you put one in austin i said mr Mackey, you are ceo of whole foods <laughs> i'd be happy to open one in austin but we are not talking peer-to-peer here sort of a david goliath in terms of resources mm-hmm. go do it uh, build it and they will come it appears to be the case Absolutely. Well, I'm really excited about that. You know, this mission is really stretching to all corners of the U.S. and of the globe. So I'm glad you're one of the pioneers that's really helping that happen. So as a plant-based cardiologist, can you really delve into what that means? Like, what do you prescribe to patients? You prescribe them a plant-based diet for every ailment. Does it depend on the ailment? What does that really mean? Yeah, well, I actually am torn between uh, you know, and titles are whatever titles are. Am I a plant-based cardiologist or an integrative holistic cardiologist? Because plant-based nutrition is one of the foundations. But 
it's not the only foundation. And I'm most dogmatic about it where the science is strongest. So in my, I am a heart doctor, so I have patients that have very serious heart disease and they're struggling with not feeling well and they're struggling with decisions about bypass and angioplasty and stenting. And I give them the full Monty, the full Ornish, the full Esselstyn, the full Barnard, the full mm-hmm. McDougal. I tell them, you know, 100% diet, no added oil, totally plant-based, according to science, will improve your condition. And I see that. I um, had a wonderful patient today who was struggling with angina pain, that horrible constricting feeling that is pretty uncommon nowadays because we have so many medications and other treatments. And it's just melted. He doesn't have it anymore. And I said, you know, we didn't change medicines. I didn't add any vitamins last few visits. He goes, I'm eating different. I'm finally doing what you've been telling me for years. And uh, it's extremely effective. So that's that's a small slice of the pie. I tell everybody else the medical advantages, the potential to control your weight, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, improve or at least maintain your sexual powers and potency, anti-aging properties that have been demonstrated with a clean, whole food, plant-based diet. It's you know, 100%, 98, 99% of the way on the spectrum. You know, and some get it, some don't. They watch Forks Over Knives or Plant Pure Nation or, you know, read books that I have in my office and loan them. And, uh, you know, if they don't have that extreme a case of cardiac disease, we also talk about the environment. We talk about animal rights, ahimsa, you know, the need to protect the planet for future generations and pretty powerful stuff. But then that's just one part of the prescription because I'm talking about sleep and sex and joy and socialization and vitamins and supplements and infrared sauna and uh, chelation and uh, vitamin C. And I got a whole package that we offer them because heart disease is a bad deal, but it's a very hopeful disease nowadays. I, uh, I really believe we can prevent it and reverse it so that future generations don't have to have coronary care units and cath labs and hospitals. We shouldn't have hospitals. We should turn them into urban farms or something. Absolutely. I love everything you just said. There's so much I want to ask you. I don't even know where to go next, but if, you know, I feel like there's not many doctors, medically trained doctors out there that are doing the amazing things that you're doing and really prescribing Uh, this type of diet and nutrition and lifestyle changes. Why are you different? What inspired this? Well, the good news is it is growing. Um, It's not growing fast enough because it's not routinely in the medical schools. It's not routinely in training programs. There are great examples where it is. There's examples of doctors and other health professionals taking cooking classes and nutrition classes, but it's still a small percentage. And we struggle with that here in my city of Detroit and a couple of medical schools we have around here. You know, uh, why was I attracted? Uh, Just a couple of funny stories. I walked into undergraduate, walked into the cafeteria with my girlfriend who's been my wife of uh, more than three decades and said, disgusting. We're eating at the salad bar. She agreed. That's, that was our first step. Mm -hmm. And second step was reading John Robbins' Diet for New America, which I had never really considered the full implications of environment, animal rights. This is a book that was very popular in the 80s and even health issues. There weren't many papers at the time on the health aspects of adopting a vegetarian, vegan diet. And then uh, the last little piece, I did some really advanced training in angioplasty, stenting, how to unblock arteries. And I started my first job July 1, 1990, Ann Arbor, Michigan came with credentials. I was going to change the world. The first three weeks of my practice, I was busier than I could ever imagine. Yeah. And I picked, I was sitting on my couch at home and I picked up a journal and there was an article by some young dude named Dr. Dean Ornish who claimed he could reverse heart blockage by having you eat Brussels sprouts and salad and meditate and right. say ohm and do kinds of weird stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, I read that damn thing five, ten times. I knew who I never heard of him before. I knew who his co-authors were and where the universities were that he was doing research out of. And I said, dang, you know, I just spent seven years learning how to do this mechanically. And this guy has learned how to change your body into a healing, not a hurting kind of machine. And I need to learn how to do both. So that really kicked me off to say, you know, there's no reason to throw away what I've been learning. It's good stuff. Yeah. But maybe, maybe after they need their urgent care, they may be able to actually, you know, live a better life and just started teaching right from really the third week of my training uh, or really practice that uh, we could combine the best of modern medicine with prevention and uh, really improve outcome. And I just saw people flourish. So 
I just said, I'm going to just keep up with this. And yeah, you take some heat. My associates thought it was crazy to talk about nutrition, crazy to eat on a healthier side myself, where they were chowing down on burgers and fries and mm -hmm. fried macaroni and cheese. But, you know, the pendulum swing and they still eat that stuff, but they know it's wrong. They just <laughs> can't break their heads. Right. Uh, well, the Cosmo Cafeteria keeps serving it. You know, this is 26 years later. So, we haven't made much ground with uh, hospital administration. If they make money, they sell it. And right. uh, if it hurts people, they take care of them and make money on that too. So it's a win-win for them, but it's morally irresponsible. Absolutely. I could not agree more. So Dr. Khan, what is your diet like day to day? What are you eating? What are your, what are your children, your family eating? Things like that. Well, I certainly have no class one carcinogens in my breakfast and Mm -hmm. I'm referring to the new World Heart World Health Organization declaration that right. bacon, salami, bologna, beef jerky, and such are on the equivalent uh, risk to people for cancer is smoking. But uh, that's you know been a 35 year plant based uh, lifestyle. Um, usually, morning is one of a couple things. There might be chia pudding in the refrigerator. It's kind of the new last few years. Might be a uh, overnight muesli oatmeal with hemp milk, soy milk, oat milk, rice milk, you know, the walnuts, cacao nibs, goji berries, but it's quick stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe made it a couple of days before it's been sitting around. Quick smoothies always a go-to. Uh, fresh blueberries, frozen blueberries, my Nutribullets, my always a couple big keeping tablespoons of flaxseed every morning. Unbelievable for prostates, unbelievable for boob health. I can say boob. Can I say boob? <laughs> you, can you say that Amazing again? Amazing <laughs> for those glandular tissues. A uh, couple tablespoons of flaxseed a day can provide all the omega-3 precursor, alpha linoleic acid, that you need. A couple tablespoons of ground flaxseed a day can lower your blood pressure 10 points as much as your prescription med. That helps lower your blood pressure. Wow. Great fiber source. So anyways, always, always ground flax. Just get it done in the morning. Okay, so how right. many teaspoons for the boobs? <laughs> two, two, uh, one for each boob, one tablespoon for each boob. Um, Perfect. You know, okay. Two tablespoons per prostate, uh, you know, two tablespoons a day. That's a okay. calculation okay. by some august physicians at the Institute of Medicine and such that, that will provide adequate precursor to omega-3, EPA, DHA. For clean eaters, if you don't want to go to fish and other sources of omega-3, walnuts, you know, uh, another great source, chia, hemp. You know, I'll, I may put green powders in my smoothie. I'm not a huge fan of protein powders. I mean, they're going to be pea or brown rice. Uh, there may be some, but I, I don't know, pack them in. Maybe some maca, maybe some, you know, uh, adaptogens to get through the day. And, you know, that'll just zip on up real quick. I like beet, beetroot, spinach. I may put black beans in a smoothie. You can't taste it with enough blueberries. It's a great way to get a little extra fiber, hmm, never a little extra bean. It. Yeah, black beans in a smoothie are like putting black beans in a brownie. I mean, you know, that's pretty popular and you really don't taste them and they really do add some nice fiber and consistency. I also make my smoothies, I call them chewies. Mm -hmm. It's like three seconds of circulating I want them crunchy. There's you know, this great debate, which is really not a debate, juicing, smoothie, what's better. You know, one of the subtle arguments for not doing smoothies is when you drink down you know, wonderful things like green vegetables and blueberries, there may be little time to interact with your tongue. And there actually can be some good things that happen when you have nitrate-rich foods like spinach and kale and arugula that you might choose to put in a smoothie. If they have time to hang around your tongue, you may create some good heart-friendly chemicals called nitric oxide. So I, chewing and a little mouth time is probably better to kind of slow down and be mindful and uh, age your nutrition, but it also may age your cardiovascular health. So I make the, you know, they don't always have to taste perfect. I'm not a real connoisseur in my morning. So anyways, I'm on my way. Try not to snack. I might snack during the day and a little handful of nuts like everybody, but not much. Mm -hmm. uh, lunch, I always bring lunch, and I bring lunch in glass cases. I don't do plastic anymore. I don't microwave in plastic. I don't drink in plastic anymore. That's um, good to know. We don't either, but can you tell us why? Yeah, sure. I mean, the field of you know EDCs, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, the fact that we touch thermal paper at the coffee shop, the fact that we are drinking out of plastic bottles, and uh, the fact that our hand soap says triclosan 5% on the back. All these things are 
chemicals that get absorbed through our skin or we drink them and they are circulating through our bloodstream. We can measure them all in our urine. You can measure them in newborn infants and they have 200 chemicals in their uh, cord blood. Most adults have 500 industrial chemicals we're talking about and they shouldn't be there. And, uh, you know, it's been maybe controversial that these are bad for your health, good for your health, but the pendulum is clearly swinging. They are bad for your health. Right. The uh, medical community is slowly addressing the fact that these are a detriment to our thyroid, to our sex hormones, fertility. So being very mindful of avoiding plastics, cooking in plastics, carrying water and juice around in plastics, and just not doing it. So I'm, I'm a glass guy. We're all good here in Detroit. Everything's good. <laughs> drinking some uh, some good green tea, and maybe I didn't do my matcha quite thin enough. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a little display in my medical office of glass containers. Just an example for patients. You know, it really matters nowadays. You know, and lunch will be anything that was in the fridge. It could be homemade black bean burgers, lentil burgers, salad, a lot of kimchi, a lot of fermented stuff. I'm not real picky. Dinner and I own a restaurant, so I've been eating in my place, but um, it previously was casseroles and soups and lana brown rice. And, you know, it's whole food, plant based, a lot of spices. I mean, spices, spices, spices. I mean, I am a curry powder freak and a turmeric freak and garam masala. I probably just offended everybody of uh, Indian origin when I say that, but another <laughs> very classic Indian spice. You know, cloves, you know, if it's oatmeal, it's going to have cloves and allspice. Why? Because they are dried plants. They have a tremendous ability to have antioxidants, phytonutrients. Um, some of the most antioxidant-rich foods on the planet are putting in allspice and cloves and sage on your soups and uh, uh, ginger, anywhere you can put in ginger. So a little, little square of dark chocolate pretty much every day, a little inch by inch, you know, maybe a couple of them, you know, high cacao. What about wine? good for artery health. <laughs> Uh, one of you know one of the joys of you know sacrificing a few things to benefit in terms of health and vitality. You don't have to sacrifice your dark chocolate even for a moment. I will never sacrifice my dark chocolate, so that's good to know. And um, Susie asked, "What about wine?" I try and stay positive, and I don't whine a lot. But <laughs> I do drink it. But I do drink it. Yeah. Um, bump. The cardiovascular data. I've written articles about this. Is consistently. A little booze through your life extends your life, reduces your risk of heart attacks. Now, we have to recognize the one. There's addictive problems. There's liver problems. We're not talking about people that shouldn't and can't uh, drink. Um, we also know it may increase your cancer risk a little bit. But mm-hmm. since cardiovascular disease like heart attacks is such a big elephant in the room still, that the overall net benefit to people is guilt-free, and it's supposed to be a glass, uh, you know, one drink for a woman, two drinks for a guy based on differences in their ability to metabolize alcohol, not on any kind of social norm. Um, don't have to do it every day. You certainly don't want to exceed that. Um, but, it, you know, it's a it's a pretty darn good habit in terms of reducing the risk of heart attacks and such. Absolutely. And I noticed that in your description, you have no meat or dairy items. And I just wonder, do people ask you the question that I always get, which is, where do you get your protein and how do you respond? I ask them, where do they get their saturated fat? (laughs) (laughs) I try and be kind. You know, I in my own life don't calculate anything. I've been doing this for three decades. I've never read any convincing literature about protein deficiencies and You know, we can quote how much protein is in green vegetables and nuts and seeds and all the rest. I I don't think you need to uh, be concerned. I don't see patients that I've been caring for for over a quarter century having protein deficiencies. I have them, I see them having sugar, salt, and uh, added fat excesses and suffering horribly from it. So if they will substitute whole foods for almost anything else, they'll benefit. And I just don't calculate it. So. Um, there is actually a cafe in, um, near Simi Valley that Rich Roll, the famous, yep. wonderful athlete owns part of. And that's the T-shirt the servers wear is, you know, ask me, uh, ask me where I get my protein. I'll ask you where to get your cholesterol. So Excellent. I, I, love I it. copied that right from Joy Whaley. Hey, Joy, if she's listening. <laughs> that's great. It's called, it's called Joy's Cafe. So. 
That's awesome. We're going to have Rich on the show in a couple of weeks as well. You tell him I plugged his cafe big time, as well as the Plant Power Way. <laughs> I totally Frank, will. The cookbook. Yes, the Plant yeah. Power Way. Love that book. Okay, so I know that you're basically saying that you don't eat meat because of nutritional reasons, but I know you're a big animal activist. Right. Can you tell us about that? Well, I'll say this because I extend friendship and the olive branch and often podcasts and stages with my dear friends in the paleo movement. And I recognize they're talking about a better diet than the average American diet. Mm -hmm. And if somebody isn't ready to adopt what I'm doing, but they'll join Dave Asprey or they'll join Jack Wolfson, a cardiologist, or they'll join Kelly M. Petrucci, the queen of bone broth, because they are JJ Virgin. I mean, they're all preaching cut down or, or Mark Hyman, for that matter, a wonderful physician. I mean, they're all preaching cut down on processed foods and reduce added sugars and, you know, eliminate trans fats. And, you know, we, we have commonality in trying to improve the health of America. You know, we, we, there are differences that need to be recognized. But unfortunately, I don't think no matter what we do, everybody's coming over to the green side completely. So, any message of improving the quality of the food chain and uh, access to better whole foods and uh, a plate that includes at least some brightly colored fruits and veggies, which I think everybody agrees upon, is to me an improvement. So I've taken a little heat from some people, you know, why do you take a picture and post it with Dave Asprey, Bulletproof Coffee, who loves to put butter and coconut oil in his coffee and is teaching the whole world to do that because mm -hmm. it's it's basically available everywhere now I, I don't think that's good for heart patients i would not have my heart patients do it but you know his diet plan i'm not, not pointing him out but you know many others like that are still far superior and i can't negate the fact that there are people that claim tremendous health advantages and reversal of disease i don't think there's reversal of heart disease i have absolutely standing true to the fact if you're a heart patient you have to be very careful about what's on your plate and i would not follow those kind of nouveau patterns uh, i'd follow the proven science which is exclusively you know uh, 99 to 100 percent plant-based you know low oil maybe with some whole nuts but that's about it but for the rest of america i mean i think there's room to discuss it so uh you know, but the other two parts of it, talking about the environment and talking about animal rights, there really isn't a discussion. I mean, there's nothing kind about grass-fed beef. Right. It's the slaughtering an animal and soiling the world. I mean, there's nothing great about free-range chickens. They're still, you know, meeting an end that they'd probably not vote for. And uh, their feces and their blood and everything else is still being splattered all over the waterways of the world and ending up you know, as a environmental concern of huge proportion. So, you know, I, I stand with the United Nations and said we have to move towards a larger vegetarian component of our diet for the environment. And, you know, everybody in the food world agrees that that CAFO kind of derived foods are horrible and awful and ruining the world with antibiotics. But yet that's 95 plus percent of all of the meats eaten. And I don't think the public gets when some of my friends in the you know, paleo uh, meat centric world talk about the health benefits of the their plate and the caveman diet. Mm -hmm. That we're not talking about going to Costco and Walmart and buying your food. Generally, um, we're talking about you know extremely. Uh, I don't want to say elitist, but a very small segment of the food market that satisfies those criteria. It's still cruel to the animals. So, you know, I I feel very happy that the plate. Diet, I choose to eat from is, uh, you know, the most ahimsa like uh, to the world, to the planet and to your health. So it's, it's a no brainer for me to pick this diet. Plus, I feel good on it. So, you know, end of story. Yeah, I could not agree more with you. I've heard you say the word ahimsa for a few a few different times. Can you tell our listeners what that means? You know, well, you know, I'm a I practice yoga. I'm not an instructor. When the first time they played Gurish singing Loka Samasta Suki Nabavantu, I had no clue what anybody was saying. Right, but, right. I've been know, in that situation. I, I truly, and it wasn't that long ago. I, every, I'm swaying, you know, humming, feeling very awkward. But it's the idea that everybody should be perform, you know, be born free and um, and enjoy their life, and you know that includes the animals on the planet. I mean, um, and it's a very noble goal, and we've had, you know decades, centuries, and millennium of enormous cruelty. But 
doesn't mean we can't strive to reach a higher level of sensitivity and mindfulness in our own life. It may not change everything happening everywhere, but God knows we have a world where there is so much cruelty. Uh, how wonderful it would be if, you know, even our own small microcosm of life was an expression of, you know, more kindness and more sensitivity. And, uh, and you know, it may it just speak up from that perspective. So uh, I vote for kindness with my fork every meal and uh, more people that do it, the better. Vote for kindness with your fork every meal. Tweet it, Food Heals Nation. That is so beautifully stated. Hashtag kindness with your fork. <laughs> Love Hashtag it. Hashtag Ahimsa with your plate. Yeah, it's true, though. It's so true. I think that's a perfect place to take a break. Next up, we're going to hear Dr. Khan's tips for nutrition, longevity, sex, stress, and how not to die. <laughs> we'll be Woo! right back. Food Heals Nation, if you're like us, you care a lot about the food that you put into your body because you know that food heals. The problem is that good, healthy food can be extremely expensive, but it doesn't have to be. That's why we were thrilled to discover Thrive Market. ThriveMarket.com is like the Costco for everything healthy online. That's right. It's an online shopping club offering the best brands and groceries up to 50% off retail prices. Ship nationally for free. They have brands that I buy all the time like Simply Organic, Garden of Life, Dr. Bronner's, Tom's, Nutiva, 7th Generation, Gaia, and so many more. So basically everything I'm already buying at Whole Foods, right? Exactly, but at 25 to 50% off. And you can easily filter everything by your preferences. Gluten-free, vegan, raw, non-GMO, organic, and even fair trade. But what I love most about Thrive Market is their charitable cause. For every paid membership, ThriveMarket.com donates a free membership to a low-income family, a teacher, or a military family. How awesome is that? This is a game changer, Food Heals Nation, because you never have to pay full price for healthy foods again. That's why we scored an exclusive discount for you. Yes, so check out Thrive Market and get two months free membership plus 15% off your first order. Join the movement at thrivemarket.com slash foodheals. Are you ready to start the new year off right? Have you been thinking about doing a cleanse but are overwhelmed with all the options? Let us break it down for you in our latest guide, The Vitality Cleanse. If you've been feeling sluggish, depleted, or dissatisfied with your overall health, in most cases, your diet is the culprit. Unbeknownst to most Americans, the food they ingest are rife with harmful additives. The Vitality Cleanse is here to reverse that. Through this nutritional overhaul, you can look better and enjoy stronger immunity, improved mood, and an infinite number of other benefits that go way beyond aesthetics. The Vitality Cleanse is the spark that will ignite your transformation. Cleansing is the process of purging your bodies of accumulated toxins while replenishing your body with essential nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. While the word cleanse may be intimidating to some, it actually describes the gateway to a profoundly healthier way of life that will revitalize you. By ridding your body of toxins and flushing it with nutrients, you will help your body return to homeostasis, which means perfect health. That's right. If you want to do a cleanse but aren't sure how, this download includes detailed information that will guide you through the process. You will receive an ebook that explains the specific benefits of doing a cleanse, breaking down exactly how it works. There's also a detailed plan of what to do, including a daily schedule and a shopping list that will eliminate any guesswork. Put your health back in your hands and feel the best you can. Yes, so you can download it from foodhealscleanse.com and it's valued at $26. But from now until January 5th, it will be 50% off using the coupon code FOODHEALS. That's foodhealscleanse.com. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with America's holistic heart doc, Dr. Joel Kahn, who has published one of Amazon's number one top selling books, The Whole Heart Solution, and his second book, Dead Execs Don't Get Bonuses, was published in 2015. You can also find many of Dr. Kahn's medical views on the Huffington Post and Mind Body Green. He is currently opening the largest organic plant-based restaurant in the Midwest. All right, Dr. Khan, tell us some of your tips for longevity and sex and stress and basically how not to die. 
Wonderful. And these are pretty important things. So let's start with longevity. Um, number one, don't die in the next 10 years and, and take very good care of your body because the field is amazing. And there is so much effort right now, serious money, big time science going into the idea that we will be able to have healthy lifespans 30 to 40 years longer than now, which means more than 100 years um, with technology that is not far away. So if you'll be healthy and don't ruin those hips and knees and burn out your liver and you know take good care of yourself, you'll see that we're on the verge of major changes with companies like Human Longevity, Inc. So that's a general concept. Specifically, um, fasting, a calorie restriction. Uh, Okinawa, one of the longest lived sites in the world until... KFC came in and has ruined that place completely and other mm. institutions uh, has a statement that many know, Hari Hachibu, eat to your 80% full. There's clearly animal data and human data that um, trying to restrict your calories, it's the opposite of the Cheesecake Factory approach to life. Um, you know, and be mindful of your eating, be mindful of your chewing and stop before you're completely gorged. Um, will result in on average, fewer calories per day, one of the most powerful things you can do to extend your lifespan and health span, health span indicating not just living longer, but living longer in good health. There's a in, very interesting book out there called The Fast Diet, F-A-S-T, that says one to two days a week, don't fast completely, but drop your calories in a controlled manner. And uh, it's based on scientific studies out of uh, University of South Carolina. Is South California, as one that I teach my patients is an option. If you have the discipline to do five to 600 calories a day, one or two days a week, if you're struggling with, uh, and you can do whatever you want that's healthy the other five to six days, if you're struggling with weight or prediabetes or blood pressure, maybe very effective and associated with extending your life. So that's what I'd say about longevity. Yeah, There's I just saw a documentary about that very thing, about uh, calorie restriction, and they did, uh, I think it was at USC, was it? USC that did that study? Yes, that yes. Study? there's yes. a wonderful professor there uh, with an Austrian name I'm blanking on that um, uh, it's not Gunnar Lovelace, but uh, <laughs> sounds like it. That's uh, doing great stuff. Uh, you know, uh, so that's in terms of longevity. There's many other things that can be done there, but uh, calorie restriction. Number two, I think we talked about sexuality, which, you know, it's understanding that there's 50,000 miles of arteries in our body, um, and inside each artery is a lining one cell layer thin called your endothelium. It's like wallpaper. And if you took it out of all those arteries and stretched it out, these six tennis courts of this you know, thin pink layer, it's an amazing thing to think about if you could pull it all out. And it's this living dynamic organ, and it's inside sexual organs. And it makes this wonderful chemical gas called nitric oxide, NO. And the more NO you have, the more yes to your life you'll have. Um, and there's a lifestyle. So when the pharmaceutical industry learned of this science, which was in the late 80s and won a Nobel Prize, pharmaceutical industry is going to say, let's make a drug that makes more nitric oxide so we can make billions of dollars. And they were successful. That's called Viagra, mm -hmm. followed by Levitra and Cialis. But there's a lifestyle to enhance your sexuality. And right now, beets, beet juicing, beet powder is very hot. Well, that enhances nitric oxide, arugula, pine nuts, uh, you know, basically a clean life that's whole food, plant-based, strong. Watermelon is extremely powerful with a uh, uh, product called arginine and citrulline. Well, citrulline makes arginine. So, you know, cleaning up your diet, this has been scientifically shown, the getting rid of the excess sugar, excess oils. Um, trans fats, exercising, getting adequate sleep, managing stress, enhance your sexuality. Plus, you're going to smell better. And mm -hmm. if you don't mind me saying, you're going to taste better. Ooh. <laughs> Tasting sex, you're going to taste better if you uh, get rid of the chemicals that the food industry decides uh, should be in our food stream, but shouldn't be. So eat organic to get orgasmic. Uh-oh, tweet it. <laughs> organic to be orgasmic. Uh, I like that. Very, very, very powerful stuff. Because uh, we talked again about endocrine disrupting chemicals, getting rid of the plastics and being careful, changing your hand soaps, your facial products, your water stream supply to things that are uh, lower on the chemical chain would be much beneficial to your sexual enjoyment and enhancement. Talk about longevity. Give me another topic. 
I mean, you just gave us so much. I mean, my mind is blown right now with the nitrous. What was it? Nitrous oxide? Nitrous no, oxide. Nitric. 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 Oxide. nitric oxide. I'm like, oh, I think that's what goes in balloons. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, what else that's did- the. Yeah, you said no. We were talking longevity, sexuality. You had another topic. Uh, tips. How um, not to die. <laughs> oh, how not to Allison die. has that down. How well, not to die. Do you have a? In all fairness, because <laughs> you know we all can lift things from other great authors. That is the name of a book being released uh, in early December by Dr. Michael Grieger of NutritionFacts.org, and he goes through. And I was able to read a pre copy, and he goes through why plant based nutrition. Lowers your risk of heart disease, cancer, lung disease, brain disease, diabetes, obesity, on and on. But how do you know? How do you not die prematurely from medical illnesses? And you know the biggest causes of chronic disease: the heart disease, the cancer, the diabetes, the obesity, the Alzheimer's, chronic kidney disease. All of them have a basis uh, in nutrition, um, and uh, everything we've talked about uh, is there. So if you want to avoid a heart attack. You know, one of the number one killers in America, there's six tips to drop your risk of heart attack by 90 percent based on scientific studies and tens of thousands of people. Number one, don't smoke. Shocker. Don't smoke. (laughs) Shocker. Drops it a lot. Number two, walk 30 to 40 minutes a day or at least move that body some. You want to do more, do more. But that's critically important. Number three, keep your waist thin. Kind of goes with the calorie restriction topic. The science says, and this is for the public, not for the elite, under 40 inches for the waist of a man, under 35 inches for the waist of a woman in America. Those uh, limits are actually a little bit tighter in Asian populations where they tend to be smaller, not hard goals. Number four, get seven hours of sleep a night. That's actually been showing up on the radar screen in science as a goal as opposed to four to five hours a night, which so many people do. You want to prevent a heart attack and live long, let your body rejuvenate at night. Let it rebuild all those components that you burn up during the day from working and stressing and sitting in front of Wi-Fi and EMF and everything else. Number five, we've talked about already, have a little alcohol. When you look (laughs) at big studies of preventing heart attack, a little alcohol, even on a daily basis, um, is associated with freedom from heart attack and is associated with greater longevity. And number six is the one we all suck at, which is getting five or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Yep. And uh, those that do those six things have an 85 to 90 percent lower risk of heart attacks and diabetes, adult diabetes, than those that do none of those six things. The sad component is when you look at these big data sets, maybe 2% of a population does six simple things that cost almost no money for a society, but yet can reduce healthcare costs, you know, dramatically. So who teaches that? Where do you see that in a hospital? Where do you see it in a, you know, in a waiting room, in a doctor's office? But it's simple. And uh, it's in some uh, a message I repeat over and over in that second book I wrote called Dead Execs Don't Get Bonuses. Because, you know, you don't want to go through your work career and like so many of my patients, you know, two months later or two years later, come down with some calamity that uh, affects your life. So, you know, take very good care of that magic organ you have. Uh, and I'm not talking just the guys. I'm not talking about your magic organ, you guys. I'm talking about the whole body. <laughs> but if you tell, you know, I actually, I, I have this thing. I teach my guys. The, L-Y-D-D. And I'm again, I know we're on, I call it the like your dick diet. If you'll <laughs> think about that little artery and that endothelium and then a nitric oxide that feeds your penis, and you realize that healthy food and avoiding chemicals and regular exercise and good sleep and not smoking all are a L-Y-D-D kind of lifestyle, it also will benefit every other of the 50,000 miles of your arteries. But if you'll just focus uh, you know, on that alone, because you sure don't want to lose. I, I just can't believe how many of my patients I talk to, and they cannot perform anymore in their early 50s. And, you know, it's it was it, it comes about from having made a few decades of bad choices. It was fun at the time, but, you know, uh, when somebody's in that situation, would you probably have skipped the donut and had the chia pudding or the raw oatmeal if you knew that you were going to end up impotent in your early 50s and probably not much recourse, although it can improve if you'll make some dramatic lifestyle changes. All right. I'm going to have to get Susie and I's husband to listen to this episode. The so L-Y-D-D. Got it. L-Y-D-D. Dr. Khan, yes. have you ever done stand-up? Because you're really funny. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's, uh, it's, it's on my bucket list. Of yeah. Things that, but <laughs> Thank you. 
That would be a great YouTube video just to do funny health jokes because you would get people interested in health while making them laugh. I well, it's uh, I agree totally. I think it's a a great way to approach many issues. There are obviously some really serious issues you don't want to introduce humor, but for the majority of it, um, yeah, I just gave. We had an epic moment in Detroit just a couple of days ago, because the largest medical school in America is in Detroit, Wayne State University School of Medicine. I'm a full professor there. My obligation is to teach and teach science. And we've been kind of advocating, let me have an hour to teach some plant-based nutrition to the medical students, just so they're aware that there's a body of science there. I mean, I'm going to stick to the science. I'm not going to, you know, talk about colonics or something I can't really, you know, find a big study on. And it was a big controversy. We came up with the idea it has to be a debate. Somebody else has to present the other side or point out the weaknesses. I mean, what are they going to do? So it turned out it was a very friendly debate, you know, and all they pointed out was completely plant-based diets. You might have to take some B12. You might have, you know, be concerned about your vitamin D level, little tiny things that truly are not much of a trade-off for all the health and energy you might get out of a clean diet. Absolutely. But while we were concluding, students were asking questions, and to my left were two small microphones that we were not using on this panel. And I took one microphone and put it straight up and one microphone and bent it straight down. And the last question was, are there any other benefits to a plant-based lifestyle that we haven't covered? And naturally, the only thing in my head is sexuality. Mm -hmm. So I point to the microphone and I say, you know, here's the before and after when you adopt a plant-based diet, because one was straight down and one was straight up. It took (laughs) the house down. The students walked out, you know, with a smile. And probably the only thing they're going to remember is that. But, you know, humor is an effective teacher. So thank you very much. Well, also, uh, you're welcome. I truly mean it. I am a big fan of comedy and laughing. Of I know that also helps your health in general and uh, yeah. appreciate your, your humor and your, the way yeah, you're presenting yeah. the information. The, the 10-second hug releases oxytocin and a Duchenne smile. The only good thing about douching is a Duchenne smile. You get those little eyebrows way up high, releases hormones, and it's associated with good health. And certainly a good belly laugh is absolutely great for your health. So uh, I partake all the time, like, you know, Life is funny if you're not in extreme pain, and then you have to back off that approach. Well, there's the story of the woman who had cancer and cured it not through any type of medical means, but by laughter. And so she sat and watched funny movies all day. She had everyone around her only tell her funny, positive things, and she reversed her breast cancer completely without any medical intervention. I, uh, I know that gets into the wiggly, wiggly of medicine, but I believe stuff like that can happen, absolutely. Does this diet work for everything besides heart disease? Is there certain things that it will never work for? What is your opinion? There's things we don't know, but the biggest, the most important, chronic diseases. And that word is, you know, in the medical world, why in the last 10 to 15 years of our life are we, you know, losing our mind and ending up in nursing homes and taking 14 medicines and you know, we may live longer than we did 20 years ago, but the data says we don't live better, right. um, that our lifespan is not a health span, as I said before. For most of those, I mean, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, obesity, some of the what we call connective tissue diseases, there's clearly the ability to alter rheumatoid arthritis, lupus kind of illnesses. Multiple sclerosis has shown to be responsive to Extremely Clean Diets by Dr. Terry Walls, the Walls Protocol and others, Dr. John McDougall and others have shown that. I mean, you know, it's a tra- travesty that cancer patients in general, not always, don't get more education. I mean, Dr. Dean Ornish has absolutely shown the ability of a plant-based diet to alter the course of prostate cancer. And I don't think 2% of my patients with prostate cancer have ever heard that, Mm -hmm. even though it's stuff published in the journal Urology and other prominent medical journals. So, you know, it falls upon the cardiologist to tell them, you know, you can shrink this disease by eating in a way that I do and I have to educate them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever going to hurt somebody to do it, but, you know, there's certain diseases we don't know for sure. I mean, if you you're struggling with a brain tumor. I'm not sure we have data that it's going to help you, but, you know, uh, it's boosting your immune system with mushrooms and having uh, a higher antioxidant level because you're eating a lot of citrus and other things. 
certainly can't hurt you. Just there isn't science on every single topic. Can you give any examples of specific diseases that you've seen heal that, you know, the person didn't think that they could, or maybe they had told this is chronic or this is terminal and you've been able to help them? Can you give us some examples of some of those? Well, yeah. And the most important is really cardiovascular disease. I know it's not sexy and there's probably a lot of young people listening and they're not thinking about their arteries going up, whether it's in their heart or their like your dick diet artery. But nonetheless, Mm -hmm. it still remains the biggest problem that will affect our health and potentially shorten our lifespan. So, you know, it's a miracle. I mean, and I say this after 26 years of practicing cardiology in about 10 years, it's a miracle that three to four weeks after somebody finally grabbing on to this clean, clean plant-based diet and, you know, just do the Ornish, do the Esselstyn, do the Barnard, do the McDougal, they'll, their, their need for medication goes down. And I mean, I've seen it. I didn't believe it early in my career, but it happens. It happened in the office. We have this giant thing in Detroit called the plant-based nutrition support group, kind of a grassroots thing we did to help people on their way to just give them some support and lectures. And we've got now over a thousand members and there's so many that will tell you, you know, I'm I'm on no diabetic medicine for my adult diabetes. Uh, I don't need my blood pressure medicine. You know, this all has to be done carefully. So dramatic examples. Uh, And they'll all say, I love my internist who never told me this was an option. Until I watched Forks Over Knives, I had no clue. Until my neighbor told me he comes to this plant-based group, I didn't know my psoriasis might get better by eliminating dairy and you know, doing an elimination diet and uh, upping my antioxidant load from fresh fruits and vegetables. So, um, you know, it I'm, I'm struck all the time by how fast, particularly when we're going back to that endothelium, nitric oxide, every bad meal you eat affects that quickly. Within an hour, you are temporarily damaging your arteries, every Big Mac, every uh, bacon BLT you eat. Mm-hmm. And every green smoothie and every chia pudding, I keep saying chia pudding because I'm standing in front of a refrigerator with a bunch of chia pudding and every, (laughs) you know, beet salad and kale dish you eat does the opposite within 30 to 60 minutes. So our body's just waiting for us to get out of the way and feed it, uh, you know, fiber rich, nutrient rich, uh, antioxidant rich whole foods that are brightly colored and uh, it'll do the rest just let it let it heal, you know, and that doesn't work for everything, but it works for the big, big, big illnesses that drag people. Plus, mood. I mean, there's this amazing science about your microbiome. A fancy word, everybody repeat after me. My microbiome wants to love me. You know, your GI tract and that um, ten trillion cells we have, but hundred trillion bacteria that are in our body. Some on our skin, some in our mouth, but many of them in our GI tract. And there's no doubt the science favors that a clean diet favoring a plant-based diet creates the healthiest microbiome right now, uh, makes a, uh, the, the most dramatic example in my field. There's an awful chemical that's been recently described called TMAO, TMAO, not TMI, but TMAO. Mm-hmm. And if you take a vegan and you pay them enough and tell them eat a sirloin steak for research, and you measure their blood, they can't make this awful chemical that damages arteries. You take anybody off the streets, they eat a steak for 50 bucks, of course they're happy, and they make this stuff instantly. And it is the bacteria in the gut. And we we just grow this great garden of bacteria when you're eating clean and lean and green. And we don't do so well when we're eating an omnivorous. Now, we don't know what if you eat only grass-fed and uh, you know, uh, kind of the ultimate paleo diet. It's, that study hasn't been done, but, um, you know, treat your bacteria well and your bacteria will treat you well. And that's all based on a, a good, healthy, clean diet that's not excess salt, oil, sugar. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I've never heard that. That's really interesting. Very, very hot science in the last three years. It's going to change the course of cardiovascular disease because for the first time this week, the lab test came out. So I've been drawing this lab on my patients at first in the state of Michigan, and it's going to start spreading, but you know, it's going to define for people, you know, your gut is screwed up, baby. And uh, this is no game anymore. You're, you're a TMA making machine and let's change your diet and uh, we can recheck it in a few weeks. I love it. All right, Dr. Khan, where can everyone find you online, follow you, stalk you, read your books? 
Yeah, sure. Comedy Central, Saturdays, 8 o'clock, <laughs> live in Ferndale, Michigan at the Green Space. Uh, no, I'm at uh, drjoelkahn.com, but that's D-R-J-O-E-L-K-A-H-N.com. That'll take you to my clinic and my restaurant website. They're all there. And there's a free newsletter you can sign up for. But once you sign up for it, I will hound you every day with emails. No, I won't. <laughs> Just once a week, you can unsubscribe and my books are available there. They're on Amazon. Another book coming out in January called The No BS Diet and another one on mindfulness coming out uh, a little later in 2016. I love to write the Mind, Body, Green. I'm blogging all the time. So, yeah, you know, and if people have questions, uh, there are places on my website to ask. And I can't give real specific medical advice. But the kind of superficial, meaningless questions you've been asking me, I can easily handle it. <laughs> okay, now you guys have been awesome. Wow. I'm glad you're you enjoyed sexy, the interview. <laughs> you're sexy, you're savvy, you're right on target and hip and modern and everything's great. That's a first, Dr. Khan. No one else has really given a shit before on our own <laughs> podcast, but yeah, that's, that's great. Right. We need it. It keeps us in check. About what you're talking about. Let's just sell some product at the break. <laughs> I think you're funnier yes. than me, and I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> well, let's have a walk off. See if we can, uh, you can do blue ice, and I'll see if you're you can get underwear out quickly on the walk off. <laughs> uh, too much, too much Zoolander. Well, thank you, ladies, for educating America. These are, seriously, although I, I am light and whimsical, you know, stuff like your microbiome, your TMAO, uh, clean diets. Uh, uh, you know, reversing heart disease, preventing cancer, the potential to limit or reverse adult diabetes. I mean, this is about redoing your life for the better. So I encourage everybody get educated. Watch Fort Silver Night, watch Plant Pure Nation, read an Esselstyn and Ornish or Barnard and McDougal, Jeff Novick, kind of the authors that are out there doing just great writing. And, you know, don't stand up to your doc, but be an activist and get educated and listen to nutritionfacts.org and check our website out called plant-based nutrition support group.org. You know, uh, work with your doctor. You may have to educate your healthcare provider about some of this nutritional stuff, but don't get beat down when they tell you, you know, where do you get your protein and uh, this bacon stuff is nonsense and this plastic stuff, you know, it's new age and they're just scaring you to buy glass bottles. It's, it's the real deal. Yep, I couldn't agree more. And thank you for all those resources. I will put them in the blog post with the show notes at foodhealsnation.com. And can you leave us with a tweetable and your Twitter handle? So something short and sweet for us to tweet. Yeah, Twitter handle is at Dr. Khan. And I put hashtag, your dinner is your destiny, your fork is your fate. I love it. And I also have heard you say, Health doesn't happen in a doctor's office, but where you work, live, and play, and pray. Yeah, I stole that from Mark Hyman. I love him. So uh, okay. I just you got to say it three times, and then you don't have to credit anybody. So I think that's number three. I feel free. I'm alive, but that's <laughs> absolutely true. Doctor's offices are awesome when you got an ear infection. But uh, what we talked about today, this is where people learn it, which is okay. You know, uh, it's wonderful. In fact, you guys do a real responsible job of your research. So it's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Blessings to all and good health to everybody. Thank you. That's our show. Thanks for listening. Sign up for our mailing list at foodhealsnation.com and receive a free gift from us. That's right. We have created a brand new guide for you, our Food Heals Nation. Yep. The guide is called Health, Longevity, and Weight Loss Secrets, and it's full of tips, tricks, and secrets collected from some of our favorite guests from the Food Heals podcast. In it, you will learn crazy cool stuff like how to live to 99 with no wrinkles. Susie's grandfather. That's right. How to attract the one. Ooh, how to never get a cavity again. My favorite. Yes, my favorite too. And the real secret to weight loss. Or maybe that's my favorite. They're all my favorites. And so much more. <laughs> so sign up for our newsletter at foodhealsnation.com. We won't spam you, we promise. No, we won't send you too many emails. Trust us, we're too busy for that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so go to foodhealsnation.com to get your free guide, health, longevity, and weight loss secrets from the Food Heals podcast by subscribing today.
These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. 